Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I was going to do a video on this lens, the 300mm f4, um, but I actually decided to do something different today. I actually decided to talk about what I've learned in wildlife photography for the few years that I've been doing this type of photography. Uh, so this video, I guess, would be helpful to any person who is interested in wildlife photography and they're just thinking about getting into it and they don't know much about it um, perhaps they've bought some um, beginner gear and they're looking to get outside but they don't know where to start so stick around because I'm going to go over a couple of points that I've learned and might be of use so first of all what I'd say is it's not where you go is what you see sometimes you can drive for a, a whole hour to a new place and whilst it is really exciting because you're somewhere that you've never been before you can just have an okay time and you, you might not see what you are after and you could have a totally different session if you drive 10 minutes down the road to your local nature reserve and you could see something that makes you remember why you like this type of photography wildlife photography so you don't always have to go far and obviously not going far has its benefits as well because you can be there in 10 to 15 minutes so you get more time there um, which leads me on to my next point about conditions so conditions are really important just as they are in landscape photography you wouldn't think it in wildlife photography but the lighting uh, sets the scene as much as your subject so if you go to somewhere that's only 10 to 15 minutes away you can get up early for misty valleys uh, or you could go out late in the evening in summer for sunset uh, where you might get nice back illuminated animals if you know if, if you shoot in winter for example which is just you know it's coming up in a couple of months if you had some snow where you live and you see a robin then the colors just change it dramatically because you know you, you can have the benefit of a blue sky on a sunny day but you could also have harsher conditions that appeal to you yeah, not everyone has the same style of wildlife photography and not everyone lives in england some people live in sweden that do wildlife photography russia you know estonia you know they do fantastic bird photography so i mean the benefit of having blue sky on a sunny day would mean lower iso levels which which would help keep the, the noise down so it would be cleaner images which is always helpful you can get that in winter on a nice crisp sunny day but yeah get up early and get out at different times because the conditions will affect your image and it might give you a certain look or style that you hadn't thought of before another tip which i'd say for a beginner is to pre-program your settings so what i mean by this is to pick your favorite tried and tested settings so i'm just going to go into the menu system here and if i hit menu so on my camera I've got a cropping aspect ratio of 1.6 which is what you get with an APS-C camera with Canon anyway but this is a full frame camera so a lot of these new mirrorless full frame cameras have the option to shoot either in full frame or a crop so obviously I have that setting there and as you can see I've pre-programmed my favorite wildlife settings so I've got shutter speed on 320th of a second which is quite low mainly because the wildlife photography I like to do is a lot of like perch shots so not in action not flying as much um, I've got f6.3 to keep it nice and sharp um, and I have a default ISO of 500 so what that does is it helps me be prepared for mostly any scene so if a kingfisher was to turn up um, I could get a perch shot of it um, with that shutter speed whilst also not having much noise because the ISO is low the aperture obviously is a bit sharper than say shooting wide open on this lens at f4 so it just makes it easier for you if you stumble upon something and need to react fast because obviously in wildlife photography you know subjects can be startled so if you've got your settings there all ready to go especially with a prime lens like this you're just set up you can walk around and if you see something you're ready to go if you need to you can bump up the ISO after you take the first couple of shots which is often the case and with a mirrorless camera you've got a electronic viewfinder so you've got all your exposure settings how they would look so it does make it easier for you with mirrorless as well the other tip I'd say is don't go out with a target subject sometimes it's good to do this but sometimes you should just go out with no goal there's 
often a big deal in wildlife photography because it can distract you from the fun side. But if you go out from home hoping to photograph kingfishers, they're not seeing it, you can feel a little deflated. It's best to head out at interesting times, as I said, morning, evening, you know, for the conditions, but be more open-minded to what you see. So don't have a target all the time, just go for a stroll, go to a, a nature reserve, and you might see something that you haven't seen in five years or you've never seen. Another point I just want to talk about is frames per second. It's not all about frames per second. A lot of these mirrorless cameras can do 20 frames per second, 30 frames per second. Olympus, you know, they can do 60 frames per second, some of their mirrorless cameras. And whilst this is amazing, and it's, it's a big jump in what it was a few years ago, they've come on amazingly. Um, there are times when wildlife photography, you simply don't need that kind of frames per second. I mean, this camera is five frames per second, and it suits me for slow moving animals, perch shots, you know, things like that. So don't feel like you have to get the latest camera. I mean, it can feel like you're behind the pack, especially at the minute when, you know, there's cameras coming out that can do such blistering speeds, but you don't have to have 20 frames per second at all, which is something which, you know, I've realized now, uh, I thought that wasn't the case to begin with, but you, you don't need 30 frames per second, you know? I mean, 10 is fantastic. If you can't get your shot with 10, then, you know you need to just practice basically so the last point i want to go over is quite an important one actually so if you are literally starting out in photography with the main goal of doing and practicing wildlife photography as your main genre then you need to decide between a full frame or an aps-c camera so this is both a hard choice and a debatable one but the good news is you don't have to pick nowadays as i said with a lot of mirrorless cameras because they do come with a crop option so if you know that you are going to get a mirrorless camera and you don't really want to commit to full frame or crop sensor a lot of the full frame cameras do have a crop mode anyway it will reduce the megapixels but that can be good because it can also reduce the file sizes as well so there's there's pros and cons really if you're still rocking a dslr though it's more of a decision you have to make. For example, a Nikon D500 is fantastic. That's a crop sensor DSLR. Um, or do you go with a Nikon D5, which might have cleaner files because it's full frame, but you don't get that same kind of reach. A bit like with Canon cameras, a Canon 7D Mark II, or do you go with a Canon 1DX Mark II? The choice is yours. It's, it's fantastic, really, that you've got the option nowadays. So, yeah, those are my tips for what I've learned with wildlife photography. There are some images I've taken over the last few years, which obviously I've enjoyed, but I've never really got an amazing wildlife shot, but that's the beauty of it. You can do it for years and everything sort of clicks into place. You could be on a walk and you could see, like I saw a kestrel um, at the start of this year and it had perfect sky background, it was blue sky. It didn't take off, it just sat there and let me take some images and I had the ISO at 500, so it was a very lucky shot uh, but also because I had my settings already pre-programmed it was a very easy shot as well so yeah you don't have to go too far to see what you're wanting to see just get out there make sure you've got a lens that's about 300 millimeters full frame or crop sensor body attached to it and just have some fun so um, yeah if anyone wants to ask anything in the questions or they want to talk about their own wildlife experience or even their setup I'd love to hear what they're shooting with and why and how many of you out there like to do bird photography but don't think megapixels frames per second um, or even autofocus is that big a deal so leave a comment and that'd be fantastic and i will get back to you um yeah thank you for, thank you for watching guys thank you bye